I heard a wedding story a few days ago from a friend of my wife's. Now this gal is not a DJ or even in the DJ business. She was a guest at a really nice wedding in Roscoe, Illinois. Now, I'm not going to mention any names, okay? The wedding was beautiful. The guests drove over to a really nice reception facility. The DJ's there playing some dinner music at a pleasant volume, allowing the guests to chat and get to know each other a little better, get caught up. The bride and groom got introduced. They were served a fantastic dinner, and then it happened. Halfway through the dinner, the music stopped. The uncomfortable silence lasted 5, 10, 20 minutes. The DJ was frantic, running around trying to get back on the air. The DJ was not prepared. He either A, did not know how, or B, was not physically prepared with redundant equipment on site. Either way, the bride and the groom danced their first dance to a small boombox that the bride's mother had to drive all the way home to get. I mean, just hearing that story makes me feel sick. Now, I'm not going to mention any names here, but this guy, this so-called wedding DJ, in my opinion, he should have been DJing at a bar somewhere, building up his skills, and not posing as a serious wedding DJ. People ask me sometimes, Ronnie, what's the difference between a $200 mobile DJ and a $2,000 mobile DJ. Obviously, the equipment is important, but go beyond that. Well, this video is gonna give you a small glimpse into what it takes, just a small glimpse into what it takes to rise above, to be the go-to DJ in your market. If you already know your craft and you're ready to go pro, try to position yourself as the reliable, knowledgeable, affable, and always able to get it on the air DJ. Now this doesn't happen overnight, but sometimes, in fact, you'll be like the only person that knows what happened, but sometimes you'll be there to come through for someone in an emergency. And when that happens, your reputation will start to grow and your name will spread. Now today, I'm gonna go deep behind the scenes and show you my DJ emergency kit. No joke, this is my personal bag that I carry to all my shows. This bag has saved my career and is always close by. It started out as a small plastic box with mostly RCA adapters and connectors, you know, the most common ones that you run into out there. And over the years it's gotten bigger, things like a couple of XLR cables, a couple of RCA cables, a couple of backup microphones, an extension cord, basic hand tools like screwdrivers, long nose pliers, electrical tape, duct tape, a knife, mini screwdrivers, and a small socket set. That's a great start and a great kit for most DJ emergencies. I hope it's helpful for you. I'm Ron Reiner from DJRonReiner.com. Thanks for watching.